We are learning more about an FBI search warrant executed at former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Multiple sources tell CBS News that the search was connected to the missing White House records. Earlier this year, the National Archives requested that the Justice Department look into Trump's handling of classified documents. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins me now for more on this. So, Scott, give us some context. Have there been other criminal investigations in the past related to archives and classified documents? Yeah, for so many people, the archives is the place you visit when you go to Washington, D.C. with your high school tour group or with your family over spring break. The National Archives is also a federal agency with its own internal investigative force, its own agents who investigate possible misconduct or crimes with federal documents. A CBS News review of some of the case filings from National Archives investigators in the Justice Department show a series of recent cases where people were criminally prosecuted for allegedly mishandling or trading or selling records or items that are supposed to be in the National Archives possession. Those cases were prosecuted in Maryland. Some of them involved National Archives employees who were accused of and later pleaded guilty to selling the items of the archives for profit, sometimes on eBay. Now, this investigation, according to multiple sources, involves the handling or removal of White House records to Mar-a-Lago. But presidential records under the Presidential Records Act, the PRA, are supposed to be and designed to be in the possession of the National Archives and not removed to a private residence. There's any number of security issues, Lana, with having White House records, federal records in a private home, but also there's a potential violation of law for not following the Presidential Records Act. Though it seems obscure to people, it's not uncommon for the National Archives to ask the Justice Department to investigate mishandling of records. That's what they did. Six months ago tomorrow, they asked the Justice Department to investigate these Mar-a-Lago records. And, Lana, we have may, may have seen the tip of the spear of this investigation with FBI agents going to Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, so not unprecedented that there are investigations into this, but unprecedented certainly in the target of this investigation. And, and some GOP members and Trump loyalists are calling for the Justice Department to be defunded in the wake of the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago. Scott, what more can you tell us about this? Actually, the calls for the defunding of the Justice Department actually by just a few days, Lana, predate the search at Mar-a-Lago at the CPAC conservative convention last week. Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs said publicly that if Republicans take control of the House, they will consider a defunding of the U.S. Justice Department, big citing his frustration with the January 6th investigation and prosecutions. But the range of Republicans calling for the Justice Department to explain what it did at Mar-a-Lago is quite a range. Tonight, Mitch McConnell issued a statement saying the Justice Department has to explain why it would search a former president's home. The public deserves an explanation. At the other side of that spectrum, Maryland Republican Governor Larry Hogan, an often fierce critic of former President Trump, also issued a statement on Tuesday saying the Justice Department, and in his words, the Biden administration, should explain why such a step was taken. Here's the bottom line, Lana. This is a provocative step. It's an unprecedented step for the Justice Department to raid a former president's home. What has always been the Department of Justice's policy is they don't comment on pending investigations, they don't confirm or deny investigations, and search warrants stay sealed until or unless a criminal or civil case is filed. Let's see if that policy is tenable at this unique moment in this unique case. Certainly unique, and as people are accusing the Justice Department of becoming politicized. It certainly makes, it has an impact on our own trust in that institution. But Scott, before we let you go, I want to also talk about a different investigation that you've been following January 6th. Former Trump Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Republican nominee for Pennsylvania Governor Doug Mastriano appeared Tuesday before the House Committee investigating the insurrection. Do we know anything about their interviews? we we'll tell you a bit about Doug Mastriano's appearance. Mastriano, you'll recall, is the GOP gubernatorial nominee in Pennsylvania, less than 100 days till election in the Commonwealth. Mastriano was also outside the Capitol January 6th, and the January 6th Select Committee had subpoenaed him, arguing, among other things, that he had some communication about the fake electors plan. 
Mastriano appeared very briefly today. CBS News has learned there's been a disagreement between the Mastriano camp and the January 6th committee about whether Mastriano's team could video record the session. He's not the first witness to have that disagreement with the committee. So too did Rudy Giuliani, whose first meeting was canceled for that reason. He would later sit for nine hours. We'll see if Doug Mastriano comes back, but he was there for just minutes, we've learned. That disagreement was the issue. Mike Pompeo's different. Not a subpoena for the former Secretary of State, but what we are told is a meeting that was set for today for Mike Pompeo. There's been a lot of interest from the committee about what the Trump cabinet, Mike Pompeo included, were doing or saying before and after January 6th. Mike Pompeo to CBS News has thrown cold water on this accusation that there was a serious talk of the 25th Amendment being invoked, but the committee has a lot to ask him. We'll see if he had a lot to say. Very interesting on the cabinet because obviously there were members of the cabinet that resigned immediately following January 6th. Scott, thanks for staying up to date on all of it and bringing it to us. Thank you.